this video I'm going to talk to you guys about the type 3 malfunction what it is, how to clear it, how to set it up in practice. So this is nothing to really get anxiety over. I mean, these, has ha these have happened to me so often that it's just like, okay, a type 3 malfunction. All I have to do is identify it, and I go through my process. So first off, let's talk about the identification. Like, what is a type 3 malfunction? Well, it's considered the worst type because it's basically going to require remedial action in order to clear it. And I will tell you right now, there is no such thing as cheating on this. I've seen people try to use the cheat, and they actually put themselves in worse uh, positions doing it. And I'll cover this throughout the video. So it can be in the form of a double feed, which is basically where you have two rounds literally fighting for, you know, a room in the chamber for it. And you'll see this with 1911s and when you have feed lips that go out or you have an oversprung magazine. Like I had this issue with the ETS uh, Glock mags and uh, it, it just was a spring tension issue where it was basically bouncing the round out and the angle of the feed lips was actually causing them to get pushed out under their own tension just from that bounce of being the next in line. So anyways, that's something that can happen and we'll talk about how to set it up in a little more detail on how it happens. But then you also have failures to extract, which is the most common one. I found this to be that, it, that it's the most common thing is that you will have failures to extract. And what that is, is you have a round that has fired and it is stuck in the chamber. And somehow it let the slide go back either a little bit or all the way and try to pick up the next round in some form or fashion. Now, sometimes the brass can stick out a little bit. Uh, or it can stick out a good amount, like on 1911s, you might have uh, an issue where, you know, the brass didn't exactly cool down enough or, or whatever. It can be very common with pretty much any uh, firearm. So it's the most common Type 3 that you're going to find. So I'll show you how to replicate that first. So to go into a little more detail on the failure to extract, Basically, it's a spin cartridge that's still in the chamber, and it can look a couple of ways. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. My recommendation is use whatever caliber you have, 9, 40, 45, 380, whatever you want to do, and have a snap cap in the magazine or several snap caps, I don't care, but a spin cartridge. Spin cartridge because it's already expanded in the chamber, so it will stay in there. You will actually have to go through this process in order to clear it. It's not going to be like, uh, typically they'll call it a double feed because you have a round completely loaded and then you have one trying to load behind it. No, this isn't the choo-choo train. This isn't a double feed like a choo-choo train because that's not a double feed. That would just be an inline feed. So, yeah, that, that's call, it's stupid to call it a double feed, especially if you have a round fully in the chamber and one trying to go in behind it. That's not a double feed. That is a choo-choo train. So, yeah, if that happens, then it's basically replicating a failure to extract. And if the brass falls out, then, you know, you're lucky. But typically what's going to happen is you're going to have a brass that's a little bit more stubborn, that's spent, and this could be a failure of the extractor, hence a failure to extract. And the extraction is it's extracting it out of the chamber. So you have a failure to extract, so you have a spent piece of brass in there, and you have a round behind it like this. This is the picturesque, picturesque textbook look to it but typically because it didn't go out very far if at all is uh, this next round may try to push it back in a little bit so what's happening is if it didn't go out all the way typically what it's acting like is like a short stroke piston so it's just knocking it a little bit and that that force that it had with that initial little space that moved rearwards the recoil of it uh, it pushed the slide back some so it may have made half contact with this round and tried to push it forward. So now it's jammed up against the feed ramp. So what's happened, what happened here, this is one of the most common ways that you'll see a failure to extract. People will look at this and be like, oh, it just failed to go in the battery. No, this is a failure to extract. So look how far out of battery this is. Yeah. So anyways, what happens here is it, it only makes contact with about half of the round. And so it's, since it has an upward uh, tilt to it, it still tries to go forward a little bit and that's what ends up happening it goes forward a little bit jams up against the the feed ramp now if you try to just rip the magazine out while it's in that position what you're typically going to see and what I've seen happen to instructors who've tried this and tried to teach this shortcut is this 
they'll have rounds in their magazine, they'll have live rounds in their magazine, and it'll end up doing this while they're trying to do it. Now they won't look at their gun while they're doing it, but they'll try to show this shortcut really fast, and they're going to end up looking like jackasses. Yeah, the, round, the next round is going to come out, but when they insert their magazine, they sit there and they slam it and stuff, and then they come up with the excuse, well, if you have to rip out the magazine, just go for a new f a source of uh, ammunition. Why, do you, why are you doing that if you don't need to? So, anyways, that's why I recommend something that's, that's not only simple, but it's not going to damage your magazines in the process of practicing and actually having to clear it, because that's actually forcing the feed lips apart. And it's not saving you time. It's not really saving you time if, number one, uh, you have the round that was locked in this magazine that gets caught on this feed ramp that actually stays in the firearm because I've actually seen that happen where it is like this where it looks like this where it's jammed up against the feed ramp and what actually happens is let me go ahead and pull this little lady out what actually happens is I guess we'll go ahead and feed this a little bit Ugh, be nice to my fingers there we go. So it ends up looking like this. You see the bullets projectile? Yeah, I've actually seen this so many times where the instructor's like, well, that's why you just dump this source of feed that you just pulled out and then insert another one. What actually happens is they try to insert the next magazine, but the magazine is full. They pull out this new magazine, which is not going to have room for the follower to go down, which it's exactly at the front of the feed lips. So they try to insert a full magazine with that round pointing down and caught up against the feed ramp and the slide. That's why there is no cheat to this because you're more likely to cause that to happen than anything. They're like, well, you just strip out that magazine, you put in a new magazine, and then you rack it out. This is why it doesn't work. So, yeah, I can't even load this magazine in. So, yeah. It's just like trying to force it in, and I'm not going to tap it ten times to try to make it work. So anyways, we'll go ahead and set this up the way it's more likely to be. So we'll send it in, push it down a little bit. It's going to end up looking like this. No big deal. So how do we clear this? We lock, we clear, we load, and we're ready. First thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the problem. Click and mush, quick identification. So this is what it's going to look like. From a shooter perspective like this okay quick identification and then we go through our procedural uh, procedures of how to clear okay now I don't have to look at the gun I can get behind cover I can check my situation while I lock and that's gonna require just pushing up on the uh, slide stop as I conduct a power stroke so again I lock by power stroking while pushing up on the slide stop that's simple then I clear the firearm we're just unloading the firearm, all right? And we're verifying that it's unloaded by taking the source of ammunition out. I like to stow it on my pinky. And then I power stroke it twice. Power stroking is not jerking the, the slide off. It is actually stroking it and trying to get this thing to go home as forcefully as possible. You want it to want to be mean to this thing. You want to be violent. The funny thing is you're not going to hurt this. You're not capable of hurting it. So, anyways, power stroke twice, and then load it, which is insert the magazine that you were holding onto, or maybe a fresh source if that was the last round or whatever, and then power stroke, and then you're ready. That's simple. Now, let me go ahead and find this piece of brass and, you know, go ahead and set this up again and show you in real time what it looks like. So I have my Type 3 Failure to Extract set up here. Very common look right here where it didn't go all the way in. So, mush, bang, 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 mush. Identification, lock, clear, load, ready. And that's it. Pretty simple. So now, let's go ahead and talk about the double feed. Now the double feed is going to be very easy to clear because it's the same procedure as a Failure to Extract. Well, you can have a shortcut in that typically because it, there are two rounds that are lingering in the chamber, maybe you'll just need to jiggle it once you lock it back or and uh, clear out that magazine source. Maybe you just want to stay consistent and rack it. 
choice is up to you, but the only shortcut would be omission of the full clearing of it, if you wish, and if you're cognizant and you have a team to back you up so you can actually put cognitive input into what you're doing lightly. Still don't recommend staring at the gun. There's no need to. It'll be symptomatic if, you, if something goes wrong. So, anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and talk about setting up this bugger. So, what I like to do is actually get dummy rounds. So, I have two loaded. They have no primers in them. So I got this one loaded into the mag. This one has no primer. So, the way I'm going to set this up is I'm actually going to put another dummy round under it and just to put put some mass inside this uh, magazine put a snap cap and the dummy rounds in there so I got three rounds loaded in here just a little bit of mass so I'm going to insert the magazine with these uh, dummies in there then I'm going to take my other dummy that has no primer in it or anything and I'm going to try to shove it into the chamber kind of pushing those rounds down and so it's going to go past, just past the feed lips. As you can see here, it's going just past these feed lips, these little silver dealies. And then, there you go. So that's typically what a failure to feed in the form of a double feed is going to look like. Not really a failure to feed, but a double feed. So that's, a, that's an absolute failure. That's, a, that's actually a very, uh, it, it, it hurts your feelings when this happens. So, anyways, that's a lot of brass. So, the identification for this is just going to be, boop, you're going to see a lot of brass in there, right? So, no big deal. So, going bang, bang, bang. Again, if you try to strip out the magazine, there's going to be a lot of resistance. This is not coming out very easy because you have a round. There we go. I had to actually, I had to actually slam it in for the relock in there because it's jammed up against the feed ramp. If I try to rip out this magazine, which I can, I could easily rip it out, but I'm going to compromise the integrity of my feed lips doing that. That's unnecessary. I don't need to do that. So, all I need to do is identify and then go through my procedure. Lock, clear, load, back in. I'm ready. It's very quick. Instead of dealing with the issue that I covered beforehand where I have a round sticking up. So, anyways, just for shigs and gigs, just for shigs and gigs, let's see what happens if I rip this out. So, yeah. Did that really help all that much? No. It didn't send it into the chamber. It just set the uh, slide on its way. And I'm still going to have to rack it regardless. I didn't send a round into the chamber. Luckily, it just screwed up the uh, tip of my bullet and it didn't compromise my feed lips. So, yeah. So, is that really a shortcut or did I just make my life a little bit more difficult? Because this is supposed to be a live round, right? Okay. So, we load this up and we're basically back to square one, right? Yeah. Back to square one and, and nothing's resolved. So, yeah. So, ripping it out isn't necessary. Lock it, strip it, and clear it out, and then load it. You're good. So, anyways, that's my recommendation for clearing it and setting it up. Pretty simple. And I'll do this one more time just to kind of do my due diligence of. Uh, giving you guys an idea of how quick and easy it is. So take it and push it into the chamber a little bit, just about past the feed lips, and then send it home with the slide release or power stroke, or however you want to do it. And this is a lot closer to the feed lips. So pretty good representation of a double feed. Now typically it can be a little bit off to the side, kind of like, like that, where it's a little bit off and stuff, just because that's kind of how it works. Not everything's pretty. So anyways... Identification, holy shit, that's a lot of brass. So then lock, clear, load, ready. Don't take all that much time. There's no reason why we need to try to skip steps, create shortcuts. There's no shortcut that's actually going to have that much advantage for the high risk that you're taking of damaging your own equipment and screwing up because you don't understand the physics of what's going on with the gun. You're just thinking, Oh, well, I can do it faster. I'm cooler than everybody else. Take off your multicam 
and just do it properly. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave a comment below, and you guys have a good one.